We're live from the Mattress Firm broadcast booth. An unhappy day at NRG Stadium. The Texans fight hard, but they lose to Jacksonville 24-21 as Matt Amendola's field goal inside the final 30 seconds bounces off the crossbar, and the Texans go home with a loss, snapping their three-game winning streak. Coke, memorable moments. Well, we had some in this game, and there's nothing like football season and you, your family, and your friends listening to football, watching football, drinking ice-cold Coca-Cola. Coca-Cola together tastes better. This game got off to a rough start for the Texans. Jags with a field goal drive, 40 yards out, 3 nothing lead. They put together a 68-yard drive. Lawrence with a one-yard touchdown run. And then Houston finally got going. A 75-yard drive. They got it down to the 7-yard line, and this happened. Second and goal at the seven. Stroud in the gun. Gets the snap. Looking, looking. CJ stepping to his right now. Winding back to the left side. Trying to find some time. Now throws back across his body. Caught. Touchdown. Tank Dell. Stroud with the amazing scramble. And Dell with the TD reception. Go Cougs. 10-7. Texans trailed by three. But the Jags would answer with a field goal drive. 48 yards by McManus 13-7 kickers would factor big in this one Houston is trying to line up to cut it to three 50 yard field goal by Amendola went wide right late in the half Jags were stopped at the one this was incredible they hit a big play down to the one yard line and with one second left lined up at the one trying to punch it in but ETN was stuffed by Desmond King just recently added back to the team, came up with that big stop, and the Texans went to the locker room with a six-point deficit, 13-7. In the third quarter, opening drive, Derek Stingley Jr., pick number two of the year, third of his career. Texans had the ball at the Jags' 46-yard line, and they got it down to the one-yard line when C.J. Stroud went to work with his legs. Third and goal at the one. I formation, Singletary, and Beck, C.J., Back to pass, runs to the right side, Stroud runs across, high-stepping, touchdown C.J. Stroud, C.J. Strong. 14-13 after that Stroud run, could they hang on? Well, the Jags answered, 75-yard drive, eight plays, Trevor Lawrence to Calvin Ridley for the touchdown, and he hit Ridley again for the two-point conversion to make it a full touchdown lead, 21-14. Texans couldn't keep their offensive momentum going, but the Jags kept theirs going with a 53-yard field goal, 24-14. So the Texans up against it. Jags driving again. They tried a long field goal, but they missed it this time. So Stroud went to work. He found Xavier Hutchinson with a deep pass play, and then down to the 17-yard line they went, and this happened. Stroud with the empty backfield. Third and six at the Jacksonville 17. Two receivers left. Here's the snap. Here's Stroud looking. Stroud scrambling to the right. Dumps it off to Collins over the middle, and he walks in. Touchdown, Houston. Stroud to Nico. Yep, he just found Nico Collins in the middle. Nico finding his way to get open several times today. 24-21, the count Texans down three. Would they be able to get the ball back? They would at their 11-yard line, and they drove, but they could not drive deep enough. Eventually got to the 40-yard line. That's all they could get. So Matt Amendola would line up for what would be a career best by far, his previous career high, 49. Would he be able to eclipse it and give the Texans at least a tie? Here's what happened. John Weeks will snap. Cameron Johnston will hold. Here's the snap. Here's the spot. Here's the kick. Does it have enough? Amendola off the crossbar. No good. Oh. Oh, my goodness. He didn't make it. Another foot he would have had it. It bounced off the crossbar. Sometimes those go over. This one didn't. Texans have to live with it. Jags took a knee, and they took a win. 24-21. Could have been in first after today. Now they're in third in the AFC South, but a long way to go. A lot of good things can happen for this football team, which fought hard again but came up short, about a foot short of tying the game. Inside 30 seconds to go, Andre. 24-21, the loss. What about the pass rush today? Yeah, our H-E-B sack report, the Texans, they didn't have any sacks in today's game. Mm. So they remain at 24 on the season as part of sacks for hunger, 
H-E-B will donate $1,000 to the Houston Food Bank every time the Texans sack the quarterback. All right. The, the H-E-B sorry. sack attack brought to you by H-E-B, the official tailgate headquarters of the Houston Texans. All right, let's talk about this offense, Dre. They did not run it today. 91 yards. I mean, they attempted to, but it wasn't what they wanted yeah. out of this attack. C.J. Stroud led the Texans in rushing with 47 yards, and that is no way the way that Bobby Slowick wants to handle his business. If and what's the old saying? If you have two quarterbacks, mm-hmm. you don't have one. Mm-hmm. Uh, I can almost feel that way. With the running backs? Yeah. Mm. Because Singletary, and, and this is, stay with me while I go here. Singletary got better as the game has gone on the last couple of weeks. When you start taking him out, now he's not the hot player that he once was the last couple, last two weeks. He's having to wait for Pierce to get his turn, a punt, mm. then come back into the game. I think, you know, as, strange, as, as crazy as this may sound, I almost think they got to make a decision and roll with one guy. Interesting. Well, he had been as the doing primary well. ball carrier, and only he only comes out to rest. Now, whoever they choose, I don't have a, a horse in that race. Mm-hmm. But uh, you know, I think I think they got to commit to one instead of trying to play both. And I, and I thought coming in they would try to utilize both the game they had when they had 13 carries a piece yep. or somewhere where it was relatively even is how I felt today would go and I almost felt it was forced mm-hmm. today a little bit what about Stroud today the numbers look amazing 300 yards 304 two TDs no picks had a rushing touchdown today has six games with over 300 passing yards that's the most in the NFL period and the only rookie in NFL history with more 300-yard games in a season is Justin Herbert with eight in 2020. So Stroud has six games to eclipse that. But that's not the point here. What did you make of his performance today? And am I right? A lot of scrambling today, which I like to see because he was finding opportunities to get the ball downfield eventually. But it was interesting. It was a little different today. He scrambled before, but I felt like today was a scrambling record of sorts for him. Pass first, run second offense. That's what this team is. I mean, and when they decide to do it that way, it looks pretty good. When they mm. force the run, they get into a three and out cycle. Mm. And uh, I think the sooner they recognize it, uh, the sooner they're playing offensive football is going to be a whole lot easier on this group. Reliant power player of the game. We feature one after every game, win or lose. Proud to be the official energy provider of the Houston Texans, Reliant. Well, Nico Collins, 7 for 104 and a touchdown. A big day by Nico Collins indeed. And John Harris visits with him in the locker room. All right, guys, got Nico Collins. Big game, Nico. Uh, take me through the touchdown pass. What happened there to get in the end zone to cut it to three at the fourth uh, quarter? Yeah, man, it was, it was just one through scrimmage drill. Uh, you know, um, seven got scrammed out the pocket. So, at that point, we just went scrammed drill, fine. You know, the open window, uh, and Seven did that. You know, he found the open guy. He was doing that the whole game. You know, finally making smart reads, smart decisions. Uh, and, he, and he diced me going across the middle, man, and um, got the points on the board. You guys offensively today, there were some really good moments, some ones you want to have back, yeah. I would I would imagine. Uh-huh. What's kind of the biggest key in stepping back and bouncing back next yeah. week against Denver? Yeah, yeah I mean, we, just, we lost to a good team, man. We know Jacksonville was a solid team, but I can't I can't stop our swag, man. I can't stop our, yeah. you know, our momentum, our mental. Um, you know, we got Denver coming, you know, into our house. That's a good team, too, you know. So we're going to watch this film, learn from it, grow from it, and um, get ready for Denver next week, man. Hey, crew. Nico, you've been around here for a while. You've seen teams when you took the field with three minutes left to go. Mm-hmm. I think everybody was expecting you. You guys to go down and go get the winning points, time points, whatever it might be. Mm-hmm. How's the mentality changed around this organization, around this team this year? Yeah, a lot, man. You know, um, you know, this is tight. It's a tight game, tight lead, man. You know, this we know in this, in this lead, man, it's going to be tight every single, every single down, every single quarter, man. And came down to the last second. So, you know, we had to, got to be cleaner, uh, first second down. You know, penalties. You know, moving the ball, things like that. So we start a situation like that, man. Uh, but. Um, we got we got to learn from it, man. We got to learn from this game and uh, watch the film, continue to grow, man. Get ready for Denver um, next week. I'm just glad that CJ kept throwing you the ball after what happened yesterday in Ann Arbor. It's Nico, I appreciate your time. Thank you very yeah, much. Yes, no, sir. Appreciate you. Thank you. Johnny working in the Michigan Ohio State thing, not bad at all, but we'd be a lot happier about that after a victory. 24 21, the Jaguars beating the Houston Texans. Dre, if you told me that C.J. Straub would throw two touchdowns, 304 yards through the air, another rushing touchdown. Texans win. No turnovers. Texans win. This is the top takeaway team in the league they were playing today heading into the weekend. You pointed that out earlier, and they 
held onto the football well, but they couldn't run it, and it's a close game, 24-21. Field goal bounces off the crossbar that would have tied it, but you got to live with it and move on, and moving on means facing the Denver Broncos one week from today here at NRG Stadium. Prime Sports, tale of the tape. Primesport.com for your VIP experience needs. Well, what about Denver? They're playing as we speak against the Cleveland Browns, already leading and they started 1-5, and five, but they're a different team lately. They've been taking the ball away a lot, and things are turning around for the Broncos. Well, they really are. I mean, Russell Wilson's playing better. The defense is starting to, to get after people a little bit. And uh, Jerry Judy, all those guys are starting to, uh, to gel a little bit more with Russell Wilson. So uh, it, it'll be a tough game. It's an NFL team that has gotten themselves to 500 after a rough start. It'll be a tough one here uh, next weekend. How deflating is it for this group, this young team, to lose this one today? They were probably sky high about it. They were, and they don't come away with it. And then they see the Colts win. Now, you have all these games on your schedule. You can do a lot about this down the stretch. You would have had to anyway, even if you had won today. But what do you think of the psychology of the situation? Well, you just hate it because it's the tiebreaker and a head-to-head, and If you're tied at the end, who knows? You kind of let that one get away from you Mm -hmm. uh, against Jack with Jacksonville in that regard. So, uh, yeah, it's a tough one to lose because of the way it ended. Mm -hmm. Uh, You'd like to have seen that one go through, and then let's see what happens in overtime. But uh, this is a team that is improving. I think CJ's going to learn maybe more from this game than he's learned from any all season long. Because I mean, how long did it did it take you to learn? what the number one rule was in the two-minute drill. Didn't take yeah. you that long, did it? Yeah. It's not going to take him that long either. Don't take a sack. Don't take a sack. You can't take a sack in a two-minute drill because anything, where they were and then the sack happens, mm-hmm. now they got to get all that yardage back yeah. and you take another one or an incompletion on third down, anything, any positive yardage on third down, that field goal goes through and we're in overtime. Got to get back on the winning track next week against Denver. It'll be a noon kick. Moved from a late afternoon game to a noon kick one week from today. And I'm telling you this right now. Let's adjust our schedules. I'm I'm bad when I I will be in the parking lot (laughs) for a 3 o'clock game at noon or at at 10 10, 10, 10 o'clock, basically, and then have to go all the way back home. And try to get a nap in, but uh, <laughs> you'll be ready. So, so I'm re- I'll be ready. I'll you'll be, be ready. ready. Okay, my friend. All right, looking forward to it. One week from today, as the Texans try to bounce back following today's 24-21 loss to the Jaguars, we want to thank everyone who worked on the broadcast today. Once again, the final score from NRG Stadium: the Jacksonville Jaguars 24, the Houston Texans 21. This is Texans Radio.